<clears throat> hey y'all welcome back to another video uh today we're going to be shooting this here um new to me and it's new smith and wesson 500 eight and three eighths inch barrel 8.375 um the ports on this one is different than my 460 it only has the three ports there and when I've been told, kind of make sure this is pretty snug on there because if not, sometimes they come loose and you get a strike and they'll break stuff and you have to get a hold of Smith & Wesson to um, get it replaced. Um, they're rubber grips with the finger grooves. Let's see what, he, what else. Rear sight, um, it is outlined. Here I'll include a couple of pictures of this thing. Front sight, all black. Weighs about 4.3 pounds, which is fairly heavy. It's just a hair lighter than the um, than the 460. Just a little bit, not a lot. So today we're going to be shooting is these here 350 grain XTP mags. All right, we got some of those. 370 grain lead. Uh, 300 grain FTX. Maybe a couple of these Lehigh, the um, <clears throat> 420 grain string penetrators. Maybe we'll shoot a couple of those today. It's uh, 440 grain lead, hard cast. And then last but not least, um, 500 grain hard cast. So I'm going to be about 15 yards away. I'm going to shoot still plate on the left. I'll have the video for you guys and see that. Then I got the jug set up. So I'll shoot one still plate and then shoot each jug with one. Just kind of because it's kind of cool, you know, to shoot jugs and things like that. So, other than that, I'll get my ears on make sure everything's all cool but i actually brought a um because it's a little humid out and i sweat pretty good got me a microfiber towel for drying my hands and the grip off because i don't want this thing to come back and smack me in the face but y'all seen in a previous video that i shot one that belonged to my buddies his was a performance center one so his got the ports on all sides and it wasn't really all that bad so i'm not really concerned about that so without further ado i'm gonna get my ears on and stuff and make sure everything's cool and get to shooting all right, y'all, so everything's good. <clears throat> yeah, we've been having a lot of rain here. And part of the range was actually filled up with water. We had to wait. <clears throat> We're like 15 yards. So I'm going to go with first. So we're going to go with first is the 370 grain lid. You can watch the video. So first shot, I'm gonna put on the steel plate on the left side, and then the second and third are gonna be the water jug. As y'all can see, I hit really low and I broke the stand thing for the target. So let's see how we do with the water jug. I just nicked it. See with the other water jugs. See if it comes from together. Nope, it 
low on that one. Other than that, they work fine. So yeah, I'll move on to the um, other stuff. Let's see what we got next. This is the 440 grain lead. This is how they do. I shot way low on that one. All right, let's see. Try a water jug again. I'm shooting really low. All right, so I'm gonna go down there and reset up some stuff and move on. Here, I'll show you guys real quick. So there's my first shot. It was way low. And then the other two I was shooting the left jug with, but there's one out there that was low. And then I guess I hit the bottom of the, yeah, I nicked the jug. You see the hole right there, that's where I nicked the jug at. And then when I tried the 440s, it hit there. So yeah, I gotta reset all this up and try again so we can carry on. All right, so you can see, I uh, moved some things around because I gotta get another um, fence post stake, engineer stake, whatever you wanna call it. So I'll be shooting the, tar the steel silhouette on the right and then I got some water jugs set back up. It's shooting really low, so I'm going to take with that real quick and carry on. All right, folks, so after a few minutes of messing around with the, the rear sight, trying to get the get, adjust elevation to go up some, it won't move. It's really in there tight, and you know, I'm using the right screwdriver, so we'll see. Try it again with my little wheelers. Um, torque just screwdriver deal and it works I got it to go up a little bit so one of these days I'll go back out there and shoot it and adjust it to whatever loads I'm shooting so I'm just going to have to aim a little higher all right so last two rounds of the 440 grain lead those for those who forgot what it looked like Let's see how they do. But the recoil, yeah, there's a substantial amount of recoil and stuff, but it's not like, oh my God, it's gonna hit me in the face like bad. So I'm gonna be shooting on the silhouette on the right side and then I'm gonna try to hit the jug. I just guess I have to aim in the head. So here we go. Yeah, boy. All right, now I'm gonna shooting the blue jug. Yeah, boy, come out some power. Let's go there and take a look and see what it did to that uh, silhouette. So that one I was aiming up here and it hit down there so yeah, there's a nice little ding in it it ain't dent there or nothing but you know there's a nice little ding in there crack right there has already been there for a while who knows maybe to finish breaking off so i'll set up another water jug and then um we're gonna move on to the next rounds but there's your water jug right here there's your entrance up there actually there's your entrance on the back side and there's your exit pretty cool Hope y'all liking the videos. All right, so these are the 350 grain XTP mags. We're gonna shoot one on the silhouette and try to hit the jugs with the other two.
Oh yeah. Very nice. Let's go see what it did to the silhouette. Uh, silhouette. Yeah, it's got a lot of power. Like they say, it is the most pop most powerful handgun in the world. So anyway, hey, by the way, if y'all see me flinching, <laughs> just let me know. All right, so aiming up here, and that one hit down there. So yeah, set up some more jugs. Let's look at this one real quick. There's your entrance on the front down there. Sit right there. Obliterated it, and the other jug I think went back there somewhere. Yeah. Set up a few more jugs and carry on. But like I said, trigger ain't bad. These are the 300 grain FTX. Hey, I'm gonna dry the grip and stuff off. My hands are starting to sweat. I know everybody probably like to see a funny video of me, this thing come back and smack him in the face, but I wouldn't like it too much. All right, so 300 grain FTX. Oh yeah, it makes that steel dance. Oh yeah, y'all can see what did those jugs. Ain't no point going down there. All right, so I'm gonna save. I know I said I was gonna shoot these, the uh, Lehigh 420 grain string penetrators. I'm gonna save those for another video. So y'all just have to subscribe and wait when that video comes out. So I'm gonna put those aside. So this one is the 500 grain lead. These here, so I got five of them, and all right. So these are all going to just be on the steel plate, by the way. Oh, primer ain't flat. One. Nope. It's getting there, though. Oh, primer still ain't flat. Now use an eject, and I am not getting any bullet creep at all. All right, I gotta wipe my hands off because I'm sweating really bad. You know, sweat my eyes and stuff. It's not hot, it's just humid. But overall, yeah. Pretty awesome gun. I just I don't know why the rear elevation is like it's really in there really tight. So I try to adjust it up to let it go up some and it just won't go up. We have to see. So this is my last one. Got to do. Yes. 
still damp. And then the primers are flat. I'll send, I'll post the picture. So I'm pretty sure I found my load data for those. But yeah. Overall, it's a nice pistol. I mean, it weighs a little over four and a quarter pounds, like 4.3 pounds or something. Um, only ports for those right there. I was looking for one that had the uh, ports like my 460 does, but I couldn't find one. So that's that. Oh, and it's got a lock on it too. Just in case anybody wondered, it came with the two keys. And I'll post a picture coming to the box. But other than that, it ain't bad. Uh, I'm going to get the trigger, move you guys around. Get the trigger gauge out and show y'all what the trigger pull is like on it. All right, y'all. So we came back in the house because it started raining and stuff like that. And I don't want to get things wet. So using the Wheeler gauge here, I'm going to try to be a steady pull as back. Kind of, almost kind of like you're pulling the trigger. No, you're not. Anyway, so I'm going to try to do a consistent pull each time. I'm going to do 10 pulls, double action, then we'll go 10 pulls, single action, and see how they do. So, yeah. All right, so everything zeroed out. So there's 11.14, 9.14. I forgot to point y'all to see y'all can see how I'm doing this to, you know, all right, there you go. All right, you ready? 11, 3.7, 9.8, 8.10, 10.15, 11.7, 10.4, 11.2, but like I said, y'all can see if I'm jerking it or not, and this is my last one, 9.2. So I'm gonna take a picture of this. All right. So here we go to the single action. I probably should have, could have, should have, would have, whatever, before I shot it and then after I shot it. So, all right, so these are all gonna be single action. Cause a lot of people wanna know what is this thing really pull it? But like I was saying, it's not, it's not really that bad. Of course I didn't shoot it double action at all. So anyway, all right, so here goes single action. For y'all, if you wanna see. 2.53 or two pounds, 5.3 ounces. 2, point, two pounds, 0 0.3 ounces. While I'm doing this, I'm gonna keep talking about the gun. Uh, the fit and finish, you know, you see what you see what it is. It's not bad. And sometimes I forget to push the enter button to move to the next one. So, but overall, the trigger ain't bad. I need to figure out what the dealio is. With the rear sight, because I hate using Kentucky windage. And if y'all don't know what Kentucky windage is, let me know, and I'll do a video on what Kentucky windage is. Or some people call it holdover. Instead of adjusting your sights, you know. So. All right, last one, y'all. Oops, I forgot to hit the reset button. And bam. All right, so I'm gonna take a picture of this for you guys. Let's 
So overall, I like it. And as everybody knows, it is currently the most powerful handgun on the planet. Regarding being made for pistol, I know they got the 4570 and all that other stuff. But yeah, this thing is freaking awesome. I like it. Um, it shoots good. I mean, once I figured out where to hold it, hold, you know, a little high and right, I was hitting where I was supposed to be hitting at for the most part. And that is that, y'all. Oh, yeah, and here's all the stuff that came in the box with it for those that really care. So, other than that, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. And y'all stay safe out there, buddy.